welcome to decaf math if you are new here and welcome welcome back if you are returning uh, let's jump straight into our gaussian elimination calculations here using this example uh, so this is part two of this practice problem um, and we'll just kind of run through the actual row operation now so if you want to catch up on what's going on what our goals are how to set this up feel free to check out my last video and i will also have other uh, videos linked down below um, but here we go we have this this augmented matrix to represent this system so two three negative goal for Gaussian elimination is to go column by column. So we'll start with this first column and try to get one, zero, zero going down. So the first thing to do is make this first term one, okay? So the thing to note is that there are a few ways to actually, oops, to actually um, do that, right? We just need that to be one. But remember our row operations are to swap rows, scale a row, or to add a multiple of another row to it. Add or subtract, right? So here we have actually a few options. We can just scale this row since there's a two right here. and We want it to be one. We can just multiply this whole first row by one half, so each term by one half. So that's one, three over two, negative one over two, five over two, right? But that just involves a lot of fractions and stuff, and I don't want to have to do that. So I could also um, do, for instance, I could do row one minus row three, because two minus one is one and just replace this row by that, and then subtract each corresponding term. But I don't actually even have to do that, because I can just swap, since this is already a 1, I can just swap rows 1 and 3, right? Because all I care about is getting a 1 up there. So that's what I'm going to do. It's just easier, just flip-flop, right? I don't need to do any calculations, don't even need to subtract. So I'm going to switch row 3 and row 1. So switch those rows. 2, 3, negative 1, and 5, right? Switch row 1 and row 3. And that's how I'm going to write it. I'm going to keep track of what I'm doing. So row 1, switch with row 3. So ugly. I want to write this nice and pretty for y'all. Row 1 switched with row 3. And that's just going to be my notation, but it doesn't matter. And then we're going to keep row 2 as it was. Just the same. Right? So now I have this um, pivot. I have this pivot 1, which is nice. Right? So I have a 1 there. So, like we said for Gaussian elimination, first thing, get that top right corner, that first column, to be a 1. And now with that 1, I can look at the two below it and try and get those to be zeros. Now I can do this one at a time. So this is one row operation. The next one's going to be, um, to get this to be a 0, I'm going to do this row plus 3 times that 1 because negative 3 plus 3 is 0, right? So negative 3 plus 3 times that, 3 times this is 3, so negative 3 plus that is 0. So I'm going to keep my first row as it is, 
and then for the next row I am going to do row 2 plus 3 row 1 row 2 plus 3 row 1 oops I read that nicely row 2 plus 3 row 1 so do you see how I got that operation in the first place? I'm just going to look at this because I want it to be 0. I'm going to do the opposite. The negative 3 plus 3 gives me 0, so negative 3 plus 3 times 1. So now, to fill in each of these, I need to do the negative 7. So I'll just write it out for just to keep things nice and clear. I'll do negative 7 plus 3 times 4. And here's where I can do all the work if you want me to, but uh, this is where mental math will come in handy. Make sure you're comfortable with order of operations, with negative numbers, adding, multiplying, all that stuff. This is where math builds on itself. So you have 3 times 4 first, which is 12. Negative 7 plus 12 is 5. So I'll put the 5 right there. So for the next one, it's still negative 4 plus 3 times 7. See, because it's still the row 2 plus 3 times row 1. Row 2, so negative 4, plus 3 times 7. So that's negative 4 plus 21. Multiplication always comes first. Then you have your 17. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. So you just have to be careful with, you know, if you're adding, subtracting. Remember this this multiple can be negative, so if you want to do a minus, you could. But whatever it is that you do, you have to do with every term, just like you would if you were to write out and work with the full equations. So, 6 minus 45, negative 39. That's it. And then I'm going to keep row 3 as it is. So, 2, 3, negative 1, 5. Now, if you're comfortable with this and you get a lot of practice, you could actually do this next step. You can combine the two and do the 1, 0, 0 all at once. You can do this row as well, but just for the sake of clarity, I'm going to do this one step at a time. So now we have our 1, 0, but we want this to be 0. So I'm going to keep the two that we already have, the two rows that are already okay. Right, because we're going to focus still continuing that first column. Okay. So, this is a 2. I want it to be a 0. So, 2 minus 2 is 0. So, 2. So, this row, row 3, minus 2 times row 1 is what we're going to do. Row 3 minus 2, row 1. Did I say 2 times before? I hope I did. Uh, so, this is it's basically adding, you can think of it as adding negative 2 row 1, since we did say add a multiple of, so that just for consistency. So row 3, 2, minus 2 is 0. So then we have 3 minus 2 times 4, which is 3 minus 8, so you have a negative 5. And you have negative 1 minus 2 times 7. So negative 1 minus 14 is negative. Oops. Sorry if you couldn't see that. Um, negative 1 minus 2 times 7 is negative 15. So I'm just putting in the calculations here for row 3 minus 2 row then you have 5 minus 2 times negative 15. So you just have to be careful if you're doing plus or minus. And when you multiply, so this is 5 plus 30, so 35. Good. Awesome. Okay, so now we've basically completed the first column, right? We've done our 1, 0, 0. So the next thing is to look at this here, and we want 1 and 0. 
So the next pivot, so we have our one as our first pivot, the next pivot's going to be this number here. And we want that to be one. So here's the thing, we have to think ahead a little bit. So if we want this to be one, notice that the zero again is very convenient because whatever you multiply or divide, um, like zero divided by something, zero multiplied by something, it's still zero. So that's convenient because anything plus zero or anything minus zero stays the same. So now, if we want this to be one, it's a five. So I could divide by five. Remember, scaling is my one of my operators. So I could divide by five. Zero divided by five stays zero. This would be one. Seventeen over five. Negative thirty-nine over five. And I could do that, but that sounds messy. So what I would do is also check this. So at this point, I'm not going to touch this anymore because if I go back, then I'm going to deal with like a negative one again. And though I can get a one, that's not zero anymore. So I don't want to touch this. So really I'm comparing this and this and seeing which one's more convenient to work with. And since if I divide by five, I mean, we do what we have to, right? But I don't want to unnecessarily have to do that. But I do notice that if I scale this bottom row by negative 5, if I divide by negative 5, I get 0, 1. Negative 15 divided by negative 5 is 3. This gives me negative 7. So nice, pretty whole numbers. So I am actually going to swap these two because that looks very nice. So just because I thought ahead there, I'm going to choose to do that because I really don't like dealing with fractions or just more complicated calculations than necessary. So I'm going to swap R2 and R3. So 0, negative 5, negative 15, 35, 0, 5, 17, negative 39. Okay, hope that makes sense. And so now I'm going to scale because that's what I said in the first place. I can now make this one by dividing by negative 5. So 1, 4, 7, negative 15, and then I'll just do, it's basically negative r2 over 5 scaling it by negative 5, so, or negative 1 fifth, so dividing by negative 5. So negative 5 divided by negative 5 is my 1, which is what I was looking for. Negative 5, 15, negative 15 divided by negative 5 is positive 3, and 37, 35 divided by negative 5 is negative 7, okay? kind of hoping that this all works out. I picked nice numbers, but uh, I'm hoping that this works out for the calculations. And so then I will just keep 0, 5, 17, and negative 39. So now you'll see I have my two, I have my two um, uh, pivots already, but I still need to be a zero, which I can now do by do, 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 do. So this is very common for linear algebra homework is just to see a whole lot of arrows all over the place. Um, so you keep your one, four, seven, negative 15. And of course, like I said, as you practice this, you'll start to be able to do these steps sort of in your head or combine them into one. I'm just doing one operation at a time for clarity's sake, but um, you'll be able to do them together unless, you know, your teacher wants you to write one at a time or something like that. But um, so I'll go ahead and keep the 0, 1, 3, negative 7. Then I already have a 0, but remember since I want this to be a 0, this 5 to be a 0, but 1 is a nice pretty pivot and I already have zeros here, I can just do row 3 minus 
five row five times row two. So row three minus five row two. And then again a whole bunch of calculations. So five minus five times one is zero. And then you're gonna do seventeen minus five times three, which is two. Right? Seventeen minus fifteen is two. So I definitely recommend having like scratch paper on the side. I'm just kind of doodling it here. But um you have then negative thirty-nine minus five times negative seven. So again be careful with your minus and plus, but that's equal to oops negative thirty-nine plus uh thirty-five. So that's negative four. Oops. Okay, so you have negative four. And now we have our one zero zero and we have our one zero, so nice and pretty. So we're good with those two columns for our Gaussian elimination. And now, like I said before in our last video, then you're likely to have some number that's not a one. It might be a one, but it's not a one. And that's our last pivot. And all we have to do for this one is, so that's a pivot, that's a pivot. And now we can just scale that. So our final step, so our final step will be to take this and divide by two. Right, so one four seven negative fifteen zero one three negative seven and then zero zero one negative two because negative four divided by two is negative two. So if you're into like, you know, I don't know if this is just me, but this is our three divided by two. I like to kind of sit there and do mental math sometimes randomly for calculations and so this is actually a fun little exercise um, but you can imagine like if you could just program um, write some code for this this would be really quick and easy to calculate right if you just followed this algorithm it would be able to take any matrix and find this elimination and do this and then now we have our row echelon form it's just so methodical. Although the tricky thing is, um, since there are multiple ways of, you know, which operations to use to get the one there, like we saw in the beginning, you can use anything to do that. So, you know, deciding which one's the easiest is pretty subjective, but I just like to not have to calculate. <laughs> Swap when you can. Uh, don't use fractions if you don't have to. So, that kind of stuff is kind of cool to think about. Okay, so now we have our row echelon form, right? You see our staircase, we have our one, 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 we have zeros below that. And so now we're just gonna look at these numbers and work back up. So our answer is gonna be, remember we still have our X, Y, and Z. So Z, Z equals negative two. That's what this, this step says. And then, whoops, z equals negative two. Then we go up to the next layer, and this tells me that zero x, which just goes away, so y plus three z equals negative seven. But I know z equals negative two, so I'm just gonna plug that in, right? And then just using our algebra, so y minus 6 equals negative 7, so y equals negative 1. So hopefully you still remember your algebra, if you're taking this class, linear algebra. Hopefully you still remember, just move this over. Right, so y equals 1, z equals negative 2. And I plug in both of those values into the top equation, which says x, x, plus 4y plus 7z oops oopsies uh, equals negative 15 so then I just plug in each of those values for y and z so I have x 
plus 4 times negative 1 plus 7 times negative 2 equals negative 15. Shoot. Whoops. Sorry, my pen tried out. Um, x plus 4 times negative 1 plus 7 times negative 2 equals negative 15. Right? So then x minus 4 minus 14 equals negative 15. So x minus 18 equals negative 15. So x equals 3. And that's just algebra and, and you know, calculations, right? So now I have x equals 3, y equals negative 1, and z equals negative 2. So we've solved our problem. Ta-da! So what we should always do is go back to the original question. We have this, and so now if x equals 3, what did I say y was? Uh, y equals negative 1, and z equals negative 2. So what we should do is check that these values, if I plug in x, y, and z into each of these equations, they should be satisfied. So I'm going to do a little bit of mental math now because I don't want to write it all out, but you can check this for yourself. 2 times 3 is 6, plus 3y is negative 3, so 6 minus 3 is 3, 3 minus negative 2 is 5, so that checks correct. Negative 3 times x, which is 3, so negative 9. Minus 7 times negative 1 is plus 7, so that's negative 9 plus 7 is negative 2. Negative 2 plus 8, because it's negative 4 times negative 2. Negative 2 plus 8 is 6. Check. Check, check, check. And then 3x, so, um, so that's x, right? 3 minus 4 is negative 1 minus... 14, because 7 times negative 2 is negative 14, minus 1, minus 15. Ta-da! So we got it. So that's our answer um, for x, y, and z. So you might write that as like a point or something, depending on the rest of your problem. Uh, but that's it. We did it. So are you now getting the hang of um, the Gaussian elimination, starting with one corner, or one column doing one, then getting zero, zero, and then working on the next column and the final one for this three by three, or the three by four case, right? So I think then the step will just be, um, I think it's a matter of getting really comfortable with the algebra itself, like recognizing, you know, um, when to do which operation. As long as you're clear with that, and you understand deeply why I'm doing like R2 plus 3 times R1, it really comes from having a pivot and then being like, I need this to be 0. So negative 3 plus 3 times that. And then you just kind of follow the rest of the elements, like the rest of the row, with based on that first term, because you wanted that to be 0. Do the same thing for the next one, and then go column by column until you get your 1110. One, one, with zeros everywhere else. And then that final bit is just um, algebra moving back up. Okay, let me know if you have any questions. I hope that this was helpful. I know it's not um, particularly sleepy now, unless you were like, hmm, this is really satisfying. I don't know if you're weird like me, but I find stuff like this like really satisfying. <laughs> Especially when you get an answer and you plug it back in and it works. I think that that's really nice. Um, but anyways, I will see you around. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, I will probably, like I've said, I'll probably go back to row echelon form, but I probably will jump back into other math topics as well. Um, I've been like um, doing a whole bunch of calculus as well and I want to kind of go back and do some algebra. Like, this kind of makes me want to do, like, algebra and pre-algebra. So we'll just kind of jump around, see what happens. Maybe I'll do a little bit of research on this Mr. Friedrich Gauss dude. 
Um, but thanks for joining me, whether you're here for the ASMR or for the um, math. I hope that I can help you relax if you learn something kind of cool. And I will see you again soon. Take care. Bye-bye.